Last night, Dr. Desiata released a statement about 44 students entering COVID pro quarantine protocols. This placed two teams on, on athletic teams on COVID pause. Now more than ever, the importance of vaccinating children has come to the forefront. More about COVID vaccinations after news. Everyone 16 and older in the state of New York is now eligible for a COVID vaccine. Teens ages 16 and 17 will be limited to taking the Pfizer vaccine and parental consent is necessary. The other vaccines, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson, require you to be 18 or older to take their version of the vaccine. One in three New Yorkers have received at least one dose of the vaccine. Hopefully this will make it more. In other news, in Florida, Manatee County is trying their best in a short amount of time to keep a pond that contains 300 to 600 million gallons of toxic wastewater from collapsing. The leak was discovered at Piney Point Reservoir, which is in Tampa Bay. Governor Ron DeSantis calls for a state of emergency along with officials evacuating hundreds of residents areas everywhere near this pond. This 77 acre pond contains phosphorus and nitrogen with a small amount of radium and uranium. The county is currently using pipes that can contain about 22,000 gallons of water per minute. According to Scott Hopes, the administrator of Manatee County claims that it will take 12, 10 to 12 days to drain the water in a controlled fashion. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My school will offer an adjusted version this summer, but it will be available to anybody turning 16 by July 6, 2021. This makes a student eligible for a decrease on their insurance. We will have options for students in the Spartan Academy also if they need a later time slot. All registration information is available on our website or by picking up paper copies from Maureen Burlingame in the main office. Attention seniors, it's that time of the year, your senior variety show. It may look different, but we got this. We, got a, we have a theme, the office. We need you. Recording of the senior variety show will happen the last week of April from the 26th to, through May 1st. Rehearsals for the senior variety show will begin this Thursday, April 8th, after school from 3.30 to 5.30. If you want to participate in this year's variety show, please log on to the Google Meet during this time period. Participation can mean writing skits, performing skits, singing, dancing, emceeing, and more. We look forward to seeing all interested seniors Thursday. If you are unable to participate on Thursday, please email Mrs. DeBurgis at adeburgess at esmschools.org and or Mrs. Kakamo at skakamo at esmschools.org. Senior Variety Classroom Code is JKD6NCU. Please join for all information on your Senior Variety Show. So to sign up for an appointment for the COVID vaccine, you can go to covid19vaccine.health.ny.gov. The process to sign up is fairly easy and the website guides you through how to find and make your own appointment. One thing to remember is that if you get the uh, Pfizer vaccine, you have to be available to get the second dose 21 days after your first, and they schedule this appointment at your first appointment. When you actually go to get your shot, the main thing to bring is some sort of ID and your insurance card. You can bring your driver's license, your permit, or if you don't have either of those, you can bring your school ID. The process to get the vaccine at the fairgrounds is super quick and well organized. In my case, there was no line. I was able to walk right in. I was in and out in about 30 minutes. And the longest part was waiting after the shot. You have to wait for 20 minutes to make sure that you don't have a reaction. After weather, Mr. Ferris and I will be talking about some of the side effects of the vaccine. Today, on Tuesday, we will have a high of 59 and a low of 38 degrees, and there will be some sun that will start to fade behind some clouds as the day progresses, and tonight will be cloudy with possible rain showers. On Wednesday, we will have a high of 67 and a low of 42 degrees, 
and Wednesday will have more sun as the day goes on and a very small chance that there is a rain shower at the beginning of the day. And I'm Grayson with your weather. When we get vaccinated, we often experience some side effects. And the reason that we get side effects is that our immune system is revving up and reacting. Now, when you get sick, the same thing happens. And actually, a lot of the symptoms from illnesses that we get, like influenza and COVID, are actually caused not by the direct action of the virus, but by our immune system. So our bodies react, and that gives us these general symptoms like fever, achiness, um, headache. When you take two doses of vaccine, the first vaccine is the first time for your body to see. First, did you get your vaccine yet? Got mine. Uh, luckily, everybody in my household has gotten the vaccine. We had two Pfizer's and two Moderna's. And you got one? Yes, I have my first shot. I got the Pfizer and everyone else in my family has Pfizer too. Yes. Um, side effects, did you have any with your first? Um, my arm was a little bit sore the first day, but by the second day, I didn't feel anything. I didn't have a fever. I felt pretty good for the most part. Yeah, I got like Spider-Man like powers. So my arms are now as big as John Hollihan's. They're huge. Um, everybody in my house, the first shot was fine. Maybe a little arm soreness. Everybody, so two Moderna, two Pfizer's, the next day, we all felt like we had a cold. And if that's the worst thing that happens from a vaccine, it's, it's, that's a pretty good thing considering nobody in our house had had a cold for over a year. So obviously wearing masks and washing your hands and hand sanitizer works for other illnesses as well. So I highly recommend it. I'd love to see all kids get it so we could get back to normal at school. So hopefully. So we did put a couple sports teams on pause yesterday, but not all sports teams. So I believe John will have more with sports because volleyball was in action last night. My final four picks are Gonzaga, Michigan, Ohio State, and Illinois. I have Illinois and Gonzaga winning in the final four and Gonzaga winning it all. The men's NCAA basketball tournament has come to a close with Baylor as the champions. In a bit of an upset to most, Baylor defeated Gonzaga 86-70. Jared Butler led the team with 22 points and was the first player to get 20 plus points and 7 plus assists in the championship game since Carmelo Anthony in 2003 for Syracuse. Crazy. Uh, Baylor denied Gonzaga of achieving a perfect season and got their first national championship in school history, which definitely busted my bracket. Uh, in upcoming games, the boys volleyball team plays today at Liverpool and the girls volleyball team plays tomorrow uh, at home Wednesday against Central Square. The varsity girls volleyball team defeated Auburn last night in three sets to improve their record to 4-2. and two. Elena Day scored 17 points in a row, including nine aces. She also had 13 assists and one kill. Emma Tallarico had four kills and one ace, while Autumn Stoya had three kills, one block, and two aces. Hannah Holchansky also added two kills to add to the win. Their next game is home this Wednesday. The girls track team won Saturday against CNS, Liverpool, and West Jenny. The team was led by Rhiannon Butchko in high jump, Ariana Brennan in long jump, and Kayla Maloof in triple jump. The girls also won in the 55 hurdles, the 55, and the 300. The boys team came in third, winning only in the 55. In NBA news, the Brooklyn Nets defeated the New York Knicks last night 114 to 112. Without Kevin Durant and James Harden, Kyrie Irving finished the game with 40 points. And I'm John with Sports. So that's all we have for today. So for myself and everyone here at The Morning Show, have a great day.